<laughs> Good morning. We look today at Matthew chapter 22, verses 1 through 22. And it begins with one more, once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables. And I mean, it, it's, you know, that's the common way for Jesus to, to speak to them in parables, in stories. And, um, you know, and I, you know, I think about the Mother Goose rhymes and stories, and I think about so many stories that, you know, as, as children we had read to us, and, and we learn so much by stories. And, um, you know, reading a book, I mean, a, a book can take us um, to so many different places when we read a, a story, and whether it's a, a historically accurate story a piece, of, you know, or if it's a fictional story, you know, we can um, we can find ourselves transported to, to here or to there, and and so often with stories, you know, there's a a lesson at the end of that, and um, and this is one of the things with with Jesus' stories, with his parables, there are lessons to be learned, and this. This parable is the, you know, the, the the story, the parable of the of the wedding feast. You know, this the king. It says the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. The prince was getting married. A big deal. I mean, it's something that you know everybody should be excited about. You think about the 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 hoopla that the that the news would have uh, today and, and, and we're aware of those because <laughs> there are royal weddings and and different things that happen and the news coverage is there you know and and everybody everybody wants to go you know uh, to be invited would be something spectacular but the king has has sent the invitations out he's got the wedding banquet is prepared and and weddings you know, we, we can kind of learn, you know, from the wedding at Cana in John that, you know, a wedding feast wasn't a one-day affair. And, you know, weddings today, too. I mean, you've got, you get together for maybe a Friday night uh, rehearsal and a groom supper and, and maybe the wedding's on Saturday. I mean, it's always a two- or a three-day event or, or more with a, a destination wedding. But these weddings were, were often, you know, four, five, six, seven days. And... And, uh, you know, the, the feast would be prepared. And it says, you know, I have my oxen and my fat calves have been slattered, slaughtered. You know, it, it isn't just one. It, it's plenty. There is an abundance of food. There is an abundance of everything for everyone. And the invitation goes out. The slaves go to the people invited and say, come to the banquet. Come to the banquet. And they all have excuses. And, and all of a sudden... You know, to go to the, the, the wedding of the prince, you know, at, at the invitation of the king is not important. And Jesus tells this parable somewhat to the religious leaders, to the people of the day. You know, that you know, God is the one who has prepared the banquet and, and the, the abundance of the forgiveness of sins, the... the the knowledge that they are good enough, the knowledge that, that God has invited them to be a part of, of the family, a part of the celebration, a part of the joy. But, you know, we get, we get distracted. We get sidetracked. And, and in today's world, I mean, there are so many things that sidetrack us and, and take us away from, you know, our, you know, our Sunday mornings that are... Um, times of worship for so many. But uh, but we find there, there are so many other things going on. I mean, um, Sunday is no longer uh, observed so much as, as the Sabbath. I mean, we've got stores that are open all the time. We've got, um, I mean, there are things going on. I mean, it's just an awful lot of things that, that take us away from our relationship with God. And and so and this so this king is inviting the people into this to this wedding banquet to have a relationship to be to to be you know seen to, to be together and to celebrate together the joy that comes and you know so with with God 
sending his son Jesus into the world. Um, Jesus, the bridegroom, and we the people are are the bride, you know, the, the, the people of the world. Um, and so, so many just refuse that invitation. So many just can't, can't take time out of their lives to, to give the time to God, to, to get together, to celebrate, and to, to rejoice together. And so when, when none of the invited people come, you know, these are the religious leaders. These are the, the Jews. These are the ones that continue to arrest the prophets, to ignore the prophets. They are, they're the ones that continue to, to go on their own way. And, and uh, you know, they're the ones that say, well, you know, I don't, I don't need church in my life. I don't need God in my life. I, I can get by on my own. And... And it, you know, they, it, it says that, you know, they, they seized his slaves, they mistreated them, and they killed him, killed them. And the king was enraged, rightly so. I mean, why wouldn't this king be enraged? I mean, it's just like the the landowner that, that sent slaves to collect the harvest. And, I mean, why would not that landowner be upset? Why wouldn't he continue to send others, send his son, hopefully that... These people will respond and with respect and with joy and and do the right thing, you know. But no, it doesn't happen that way. So it says he sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. You know, drastic measures, but yet, you know, this is you know, it's another way of of Jesus of God saying that you know if you don't heed my word, if you don't follow me if you don't if you're not a part of my family you know eternal life isn't there and this is you know god is inviting people to to this eternal life to this wedding banquet where he's you are my child and i am your father and we will be together forever but then he sends other slaves into the city to invite those not worthy here he says those invited were not worthy go therefore invite Anyone and everyone you see. You know, so it's God is saying to the Jews, you have rejected me. You have not been faithful to me. So, you know, I'm going to open the doors to the Gentiles, to the Samaritans, to the Greeks, to, to anybody and everybody. Invite them. Invite them to come freely to the banquet. To, to have the grace, to, to be a part of the mercy, to be a part of the forgiveness, to be a part of the kingdom of God. Just go and invite everybody. They don't have to be Jewish. They don't have to meet all of the right criteria. They don't have to be important people. They can be everybody. And so they come. But then there's an odd place. I just really don't understand. It says that, you know, he notices a man who's there but not wearing the wedding robe. He's, he's just there, but he's not participating. He's, you know, he was invited to come, but he's, he's, he's not being a part of what he should be. And the wedding garment was possibly most, most likely provided. You know, if they didn't have something, there would be something provided for them. But one man had come and chose just to be, you know, who he was, whatever, didn't really join the festivities. And the king was upset with him and cast him out. Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness. And, and so it, it's kind of, you know, maybe it's a warning for those that, that pay lip service to God. That, you know, um, I, I'm not sure, but it's, you know, when we, God takes time for us all the time. You know, anytime we pray, God is there to listen and to hear. But, you know, do we do we just pay lip service? I mean, I mean, I'm not talking. You know, I'm not blaming anybody. I'm not pointing any fingers. But, you know, it's so th this person that's not got the wedding garment on is is there, but really not participating. Not, you know, not being involved. I, I don't understand it really, but. I hope that I am not that that person. And, and so the Pharisees are, again, upset by this parable. 
and they plot to entrap him in what he said. And, and so they send, the Pharisees send their disciples and some Herodians. So the Herodians are people that are, are loyal to the, to the Roman government, you know, and not that, you know, I mean, we should be good citizens of our government. You know, that's what we should be. But, you know, they say, teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the ways of God in accordance to truth and you show no deference, no partiality to anyone. Um, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar? I mean, they want to trap him in something. And, you know, this is when, when, when Jesus says, show me the coin. And the coin has a picture of the emperor. And he says, give unto Caesar what is Caesar's and unto God what is God's. And, and it's a reminder for us to, to be a good citizen of the country we are, to support our government, to support our country, but also to remember, to remember who our God is.